I'm a developer evangelist for Twilio. Uh, who here thinks space is cool? Awesome, that's just about all of you. Yeah, I think space is pretty cool too. So today I'm gonna be talking to you uh, how, talking to you about how to track the International Space Station with Django using Redis Queue and RQ Scheduler. Um, so this talk is based off of a blog post I wrote uh, a little while back. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm going to live code some functionality into a, like a really bare bones minimalist Django app um, to kind of show you how task queues work with RQ and RQ Scheduler. Uh, and in the, in, the, in the spirit of live coding and not really using slides, if you want my contact info, I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom of this blog post where I have my contact info. So, if you need to contact me about anything related to this talk, my email address is right here, sagnew at twilio.com, and my Twitter handle is at sagnew shreds. So that's sagnew as in Sam Agnew, and shreds as in shreds on a guitar. Um, so S-A-G-N-E-W. So, if you need to get a hold of me or have any questions or whatever, you can uh, find me on Twitter or email. So, I know what you're thinking. Wow, talking to the International Space Station, that sounds really complicated and super technical. Well, luckily there's an API for that. So, the ISS Open Notify API actually uh, compiles some data provided by NASA, and I believe they update it every day with the, the most up-to-date trajectory of the International Space Station. Um, and this just kind of just gives you a, an API that you can just send an HTTP GET request to, to with a latitude and longitude to kind of get when, uh, like a timestamp of when the International Space Station is gonna fly by that given location. So, as an example, I, right before my talk, looked up the, uh, the latitude and longitude of this venue. It's like 40.725 something. Uh, and this is the JSON response that you get back from this uh, Open Notify API when you give it the, the latitude and longitude of where we are right now. Um, as you can see here, it has a message that says success, because I guess you got data. Um, has some data on your request. And it also has the response object, which is just a list of, uh, of dictionaries containing uh, both the rise time in a timestamp format, so uh, the next time that the International Space Station is passing over here will be uh, 1538762999 seconds since like January 1st, 1970 or whatever the timestamp is, right? Uh, and also has a duration of 589, so I guess it'll be above us for 589 seconds. I guess that's cool. That's not really what I'm interested in. But anyway, all you need to do is send a get request to this uh, API to get this data. So um, this, this whole talk is basically an excuse for me to show you how, how simple it is to add RQ into a project if you're just trying to do something basic. So a lot of you might have heard of a tool called Celery. Uh, I think Celery is a great tool, but sometimes Celery can be a little overcomplicated if you're trying to just do something quick and simple like like call a function at a given time. Um, so RQ is a, uh, is a task queue that's backed by Redis. So it uses Redis as a key value store on its back end. Um, it even says here, RQ is a simple Python library for queuing jobs and processing them in the background with workers. And it's backed by Redis and designed to have a low barrier to entry. So today we're gonna test that low barrier to entry thing um, and see how long it takes us to add RQ to a Django app. So. Right now, I have, uh, I have a bare bones Django app already built, because this is not a talk on how to build a Django app, but how to add RQ to a Django app. So, as you can see, my, uh, my revolutionary web design skills over here, uh, this is uh, no CSS and just straight plain HTML. I know, it's beautiful. Um, so right here, I just have a form where you enter your phone number so you can subscribe to text message notifications whenever the International Space Station passes your location. So what we're gonna build is a web application that does that. You enter your phone number, and then whenever it, it grabs your geolocation over here, that's what this, uh, I have some JavaScript code grabbing that right there. So whenever you uh, go to this web page, enter your phone number, it'll grab your geolocation and say, I'm gonna text this phone number using the Twilio API whenever the International Space Station passes that latitude and longitude. Um, and this is a web application that you can all interact with because I'm using a tool called ngrok, that's N-G-R-O-K, and I have this literally URL up here that you can all go to. You don't need to do that just yet because there's no functionality implemented and it'll kind of be a waste of your time, but I'll call this out later in my talk when we're done um, and you can all play with this as well and get text messages from my app. So 
I'm going to hop over to my terminal where I'm going to write some code. Um, so, so it looks like I have, I have a lot of tabs open um, because there are a decent number of moving parts to this uh, to get this up and running. I'm just going to walk you through what I have going on so far. So in this tab, I just have my Django server running. I just ran the run server command. Um, so this is listening on port 8000. Uh, in this tab, I'm writing code in Vim, my text editor, my preferred text editor of choice. Uh, this, is, this is literally all of the code for the, for the web app you just saw, is this. This is uh, my views.py. Using function-based views just to keep it simple. Um, in this terminal tab, I'm just going to be running some commands here and there that I'll have to do. Uh, over here, I have my Redis server running. You can see that cool ASCII art. That, uh, that's a staple of Redis, it's cool ASCII art. And over here, I have RQ worker running. So the way RQ works is you have an RQ worker running in the background, waiting for you to, to like checking the, the task queue and processing tasks and stuff. So I just need to have this running so my code can communicate with, uh, with Redis. And over here, I have RQ scheduler running. RQ scheduler is a wrapper around RQ that basically uh, handles the task of scheduling tasks at a specific date time. So you can pass it a function and a date time object, and it will call that function at that time. And over in my last tab, I have ngrok running, which uh, ngrok is a really useful tool, especially if you're at an event like a hackathon or something, and you're doing some quick dev work, and just want to test your stuff and get it up and running so you don't have to host everything, so you can work on stuff live while you're developing. This just opens a tunnel to a port on my machine. So in this case, it gives me a publicly accessible URL that leads to my local host port 8000, which is what my Django app is running on. So if you go to HTTPS slash, or colon slash slash sagnu.ngrok.io, that will be my Django application, which is just running on ngrok that gives me a URL for you all to interact with. So with that said, let's write some code. Um, so over here I have this, this uh, this module called ISS Utils. This is just a just a, a module where I'm going to be writing all the code to interact with the International Space Station Open Notify API and to add stuff to the queue and send the messages and stuff. So this is where the bulk of the code I'm going to write is. Um, and over here, all I have stored so far is a Twilio number that I'm going to be sending the text messages from because I don't want to be switching around and copying and pasting that too much. And the URL for the API because no one wants to sit here and watch me type in URLs. That's not fun. Um, or maybe it is, but I don't want to do it. So I'm going to start off by importing the date time object or the date time module uh, so I can work with date times. And I'm also going to be uh, importing uh, PyTZ to get the, uh, the UTC time zone because that's, that's what uh, RQ Scheduler works with by default. I'm going to make this code a little bit bigger for the people in the back. And then uh, I'm also going to import a bunch of third-party modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get requests. Requests is just a, a, a bare bones module that makes sending HTTP requests really simple. So I'm going to be using that for the get requests to the International Space Station API. And I'm going to import Redis so I can establish a connection to my Redis server. And then I'm going to import the RQ scheduler module. So I'm going to get the, the scheduler object so I can use that to schedule calls to RQ. Um, what's interesting about this is that RQ, because it's a wrapper around the regular Python Redis queue module, I don't actually have to import that anywhere. RQ scheduler just kind of handles that for me. And last but not least, I have to import the Twilio REST client, which I'm going to be using to send the text messages out. So now below here, I'm just going to instantiate a bunch of a uh, bunch of variables that I'm going to be using throughout this. I'm going to create my Redis server connection. This is just uh, my Redis is just running on the default port, so this is just going to be a default Redis connection. And I'm going to instantiate a scheduler object, and I'm going to use the connection as my Redis server or my Redis server as a connection to that. And then I'm also going to instantiate a Twilio REST client object. This is normally where I would give it my authentication credentials, like my account SID and auth token. But those are saved in environment variables that the Twilio Python module is automatically checking for, um, You know, because I don't want to just broadcast my credentials in front of an audience of brilliant hackers. That would not be fun. So before I, uh, before I wreck myself, I must check myself. So 
I have these, these are the things I'm gonna be needing. I'm, now I'm just gonna go straight to implementing a function that will work with the uh, International Space Station's API. So I'm going to create a function that'll get the next time that a, uh, the International Space Station is going to pass over a given latitude and longitude. So I'm gonna call this get next pass. It's gonna take a latitude and a longitude. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a dictionary to use as a URL parameters with my HTTP GET request. So that's just gonna take the latitude and the longitude because that uh, in, in, this, uh, in this API, that's, a, that's basically what it, what it takes over here. So the query string is lat and long. So I'm just gonna keep my, my variables in my code with those names. So now that I have that, I'm going to actually make a request to the API. So I'm gonna send a get request to my ISS URL, which I have saved up top. And the parameters I'm gonna give it are my location dictionary. Um, and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to uh, parse the JSON that it gets back and turn that into a Python dictionary. And the requests module has a pretty nifty utility function that or their method, just this JSON method will just automatically uh, convert that for you so you don't have to deal with it. And I'm going to store that in a variable called response. So now what I can do with this is I can check to see if that response actually got any data back about the International Space Station because maybe you give it a latitude and longitude that the International Space Station isn't flying by because it's not gonna be everywhere on Earth, it's just it has a set trajectory. So um, in the data we get back from this, you can see this, uh, this first uh, key in the JSON is message and it says success. So if it's a failure, like if I do, if I just change that, it'll say message is failure because I just gave it a bunch of letters instead of numbers. So I'm gonna check to see if that, uh, if the uh, message in this response, if that's uh, just equal to the, the string success, because that's what the API does. And if it, if it is, then I'm gonna assume that I'm getting data from the ISS Open Notify API. And what I'm gonna do here is I can grab the timestamp of the next pass. So. In this data, you can see it has this message key, the request key, and the response key. So this is the data you're getting in response. And it's just a list of a really short dictionary. It just has the duration and the rise time. And what I want is I want to grab this first one, and I want to grab the rise time from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to store the, uh, the timestamp of the next pass. I'm going to call that next pass TS for timestamp because I don't like typing too much. And I'm going to grab the response key. I'm going to take the first thing in that list, and I'm going to grab the rise time from it. So this is going to be a timestamp of the next time the ISS passes by. Next, I'm going to convert that to a date time object. So I'm going to call date time the, the from timestamp method, which is pretty cool. I could just give it a timestamp, which is the one I just got. And I'm gonna give it the time zone of UTC, so that's why I imported that from PyTZ, so I could just not have to worry about that stuff. So now that I have the next pass timestamp, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna have this function, if, if, if this is successful, which is what I'm assuming in this uh, conditional block, I wanna have this function return the timestamp. So I'm gonna return next pass. But I'm also, just to help myself out, I'm gonna print some stuff. So I'm gonna say, the ISS will fly by, I'm gonna give it that latitude and longitude at a date object. So I'm gonna format that, give it lat, lon, and uh, next pass. Cool, just under 80 characters with that line, nice. So if the, if the message was not successful, or if the message doesn't come back with success, then uh, I'm just gonna print that the ISS is not currently scheduled to fly by that latitude and longitude. So I'm also gonna format that string. Oh, that's just over 80 characters. Look at that. Ah, that's fine, it's 81. Oh no, it's exactly 80, whatever, that's fine. So if that's, uh, if that's the case, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna return none. It implicitly would return none, but Though that's how the old saying goes, explicit is better than implicit, right? So I'll return none, make myself feel good. Cool. 
so that's this whole function that gets the next, uh, the next flyby of the International Space Station. Now what I want to do is I want to use that timestamp or that date time to uh, add you to the queue and schedule, schedule you to be notified at that time. So I'm going to just create a function called add to queue. And that's going to take your phone number and your latitude and longitude. And this is what I'm going to call from my, my Django view of the, the subscribe uh, route. So that view is just going to pretty much grab the data from my web form and pass it to this add to queue function. And you're going to be added to the Redis queue to be sent a text message. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to, we'll have to put a colon to actually define that function. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if you're already in the queue um, because you're subscribing, you have a text message notification, and I want to send you a message to let you know that you subscribed because I feel like it's shady if I don't do that because then you're just like going to be getting random notifications. Um, so first I'm going to check to see if you're already in the queue, and if you're not, I'm going to send you a message saying thanks for subscribing or something, something like that. So I'm going to use my Redis server. I'm going to call the get function or method. Uh, I'm going to see if your phone number already exists in my Redis key value store. And if it's not in there, I'm going to send you a text message. So I'm going to say the body of the message is going to be, let's keep it simple. I'm going to say thanks for subscribing with an exclamation point because I'm really thankful. And then I'm going to create a message using the Twilio REST client. And I'm going to send it to your phone number. I'm going to send it from my Twilio number. Um, by the way, this, uh, this from right here, you might notice an underscore there. That is not a typo. The from is a reserved word in Python. So with this, uh, this method just takes a, that, that's the keyword argument, has an underscore just to not confuse Python. And I'm going to say the body of the message is going to be the message body string that I just created. So if you're, if you're not already in my Redis store, then uh, I'm going to send you a text message. And if you are, I'm just going to update your, your latitude and longitude, because maybe you filled out the form again because you changed uh, places. So what I'm going to do is, uh, and, and even if, you, if you're, so if you're just subscribing, I'm going to add you to it. And if you are already in it, then I'm going to update you. So really, that's the same line of code. I'm just going to set your phone number to be equal to, uh, I'm just going to say a string that's separated by a comma with your latitude and longitude. So lat and lon. So now that you're added to the added to the queue, uh, we're going to get this is the juicy part of my talk right here. This next line, this is the this is the most important line, because here's where we're going to actually use RQ scheduler. Uh, now, when I said RQ scheduler is more simple than celery, I meant we're literally going to write one line of code that's interacting with RQ scheduler. So I'm going to call my scheduler object, and I'm just going to say nq at. So this this just literally nq at just takes a, a date time, a function, and the arguments to that function. And it will call that function at that date time with those arguments. So I'm going to give it my next pass uh, date time, which I need, to, I need to store in a variable real quick. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call that function get next pass that I just uh, wrote up top. And that's going to take your latitude and longitude. And once I get that, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check to see if it exists first because, you know, it's possible it'll return none. Remember, I wrote that line, return none. So if it does return none, I'm just not going to do anything. Um, cool. So I'm going to NQ at the next pass day time. Uh, but it also needs to take a function. So I'm going to create a new function down here. And I'm just going to call it notify subscriber. And it's going to take a phone number. And that's it. And I'm, I'll implement this in a minute, so I'm just going to put a pass down there. But I'm going to call the notify subscriber function with your phone number as its argument. So it'll say notify the, the subscriber who has that phone number at that date time, which is the next pass. So let me go down here and implement that. In this function, I'm just going to be sending you a text message and adding you back to the queue because you're subscribing for notifications, plural, not just one. So I think at the end of this, I'm going to, after I send you a text message notifying you, I'll just call the API again, get your next pass for that location, and then add you back to the queue. So I'm going to start that by doing what every good developer does. I'm going to copy and paste the code I already wrote. 
because that's, that's what I do most of my time is I copy and paste my code. Cool, and I'm gonna put that, make that indentation better. So this is the, the code for sending the message is gonna be the same as when I'm notifying you that you've been subscribed. I'm just gonna change the string. So uh, instead of saying thanks for subscribing, I'm gonna say look up even though we are indoors. And uh, look up, the ISS is above you. And then I'm gonna put a smiley face because you know I'm really happy because I love space and the International Space Station is cool. I think there are six people currently on it. I looked that up earlier, just a little fun fact for you. So you're gonna get this message, it's gonna have a smiley face and you're gonna be happy, um, I hope. And once I sent you this notification, then I'm gonna add you back to the queue. So uh, in the, in, in, with, in the interest of keeping my notify subscribers uh, function signature simple, I'm just gonna grab the latitude and longitude from Redis um, so I don't have to make that line 43 up there longer and pass the latitude and longitude through. So I'm gonna get that. Um, I'm gonna get the uh, key value or the value associated with your phone number and it's a comma separated string so I'm gonna split it by a comma. Uh, I also think that I need to make sure that this comes back as a string. You know, always gotta be careful. And after that, I'm going to call add to queue and give the phone number, the latitude, and the longitude. So that's all the code we need to write to interact with the International Space Station API and to schedule that task to be called. So in this ISS utils function or module, we basically, we wrote a function to add you to a, to a queue um, using RQ, and then we also wrote a function to send you a text message and we used RQ scheduler. So now I need to actually call that code from somewhere. As you can see here, I already implemented this ISS utils module um, in my Django app, just in case I forgot. And right here, this view is, is very, very basic. It just returns an HTTP response. So when you click the subscribe button on my web app, it just says, hey, thanks for subscribing. But it doesn't actually subscribe you to anything. It just, it's just a string. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, first I'm gonna make sure that the, the method is post, so that this request is a post request. So I know that it's the form submission and not just someone going to the subscribe URL. And next I'm going to grab all of the, uh, the data from that form. So if I go back to my HTML over here, this, uh, this revolutionary design pattern of no styling whatsoever. So if I go over here and I look through here, and uh, let's see, I go to this, uh, this div and I click on my form. I can see over here, you don't really need to read it that much, just uh, the, the elements are, the text is, the name is a phone number or just number. And then I have two hidden form elements, latitude and longitude, that my JavaScript code is injecting the, uh, your, your geolocation into. Um, so I just wanna grab those from the form. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna gra grab the phone number and the latitude which I spelled out all the way in this one, and the longitude. And then I'm gonna just call that add to queue function. So ISS utils, add to queue. If I can spell queue correctly, it's a very hard word to spell. Cool, so that's all the code I should have to write. Uh, assuming I didn't totally mess up, I'm gonna go see if it works now. So I'm gonna head over to my, uh, my web app, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, paste a phone number in. This is not my actual personal phone number, this is a Twilio number that redirects to my phone number because I don't want everyone to just be able to spam me. I'm gonna click subscribe. Uh-oh, tunnel not found. Looks like I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart my ngrok just in case. And why not, just uh, to make myself feel good, I'm gonna restart my server. And I'm gonna click, I'm gonna refresh this. All right, cool, so it is found now. Although I think I didn't wait long enough for my, um, yeah, so it says not scheduled to fly by because it got an empty object. So when you go to this page, you actually have to wait for it to load your latitude and longitude because the JavaScript is not very fast. Cool, so I got this uh, thanks for subscribing. And down here, it says the ISS will fly by this geolocation at uh, October 5th, 2018. Uh, 1809, that's UT, UTC time zone, and we're in UTC minus four right now, so that's 1409, that's 209 p.m., so that's like uh, less than an hour from now, the International Space Station is gonna fly by here. Um, I got a text message saying thanks for subscribing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's, let's hope this works. Um, here's where you can all 
interact with this app, you can all go to sagnu.ngrok.io slash notifications and make sure you do HTTPS. So if you want to subscribe to notifications right now before I test my code, um, you can go to HTTPS. Uh, you need HTTPS because uh, I don't think you can grab your location in JavaScript on an insecure connection. So it's sagnew.ngrok.io slash notifications. So if anyone wants to work, like help me test my code right now, go to that URL. Um, so sagnew.ngrok.io slash notifications. Just going to read it out again because, you know, the text is small. Um, cool. Oh, look, I'm getting some uh, some stuff. Looks like I'm getting some errors here. <laughs> Key error number. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sanitizing it, huh? So I'm getting that that uh, that f phone number thing there. <laughs> well, some of them are going through, and some of them aren't. So. Uh, and I only have a few minutes, so I'll just uh, your, so the people who, uh, who who went through for are going to get some uh, some notifications. So the thing is, um, the International Space Station isn't going to fly by until after my talk, and I'm not going to be able to sit here and wait for like a half hour. So we're going to travel through time real quick. Uh, I'm going to use the date command. I actually looked up what time it was going to fly by right before my talk, and I looked up the date command for it. So I'm going to change the time on my laptop, and we're just going to. We're just going to travel through time. <laughs> this is, yeah, this talk is about space and time, because space time is, is, uh, is awesome. So as you can see, it is now 2.09 PM. Um, I think when I was looking at it, the actual, uh, the actual time is, uh, is like 59 seconds into this. So um, I'm just going to fast forward even more. I'm gonna <laughs> click that all the way up. And I'm clicking it individually just because it's fun. Uh, I'll say save. Cool. So in like five seconds, some of you are going to get a text. Some of you aren't. But uh, I think I will because it worked for me. So that's good. It worked for my phone number. So pretty soon, it should take a little bit of time for these to go out. Um, but as you can see, I already see in my, in my tab with RQ open, um, the worker is actually getting, uh, it, is, it is successfully completing tasks. Um, oh, sweet. I just got a text message saying that the International Space Station is flying above me. So that's cool. Rad. Did anyone else get a text message? Cool. So I see, uh, see a decent amount of people. Uh, so there you go. The International Space Station, uh, once you travel through time to like a half hour from now, is going to be above you. Uh, that's basically all I wanted to show you, just uh, how to add RQ to your Django apps. Uh, my name is Sam Agnew. I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio. If you need to get a hold of me, you can find me at the Twilio booth at this conference. And also, my contact info is right here, sagnew at twilio.com, and at sagnewshreds on Twitter. Uh, I'll be here all day, so come find me if you have any questions. Thanks. Great.